Just months after he was fired from All Elite Wrestling, CM Punk made his surprise return at the end of Saturday's WWE Survivor Series. Following the conclusion of the Men's War Games main event as the show was about to go off the air, the familiar strains of cult of personality hit as CM Punk, dressed in a plain white t-shirt with jeans, came out as Chicago's Allstate Arena gave him an incredible ovation. Punk took in the cheer, stared down the men in the ring, and did his It's Clobbering Time gesture as the show went off the air. CM Punk famously exited WWE in 2014 and was not shy in air his displeasure with Vince McMahon. Paul Triple H Levesque and other members of the company, including now former WWE doctor Chris Amon, Amon sued both CM Punk and Colt Cabana for defamation following a podcast CM Punk and Cabana did that same year where Punk took issue with Amon's medical treatment. Punk also said on that podcast he was officially fired by WWE via FedEx on his wedding day. After leaving the business for nearly seven years, CM Punk returned to AEW in August 2021 on an edition of Rampage from Chicago's United Center. He won the AEW world title twice during his time there. Following an altercation with Jack Perry at August's All In at London's Wembley Stadium, CM Punk was fired by AEW for cause on September 2nd. That ended a tumultuous year after he was involved in a backstage fight that included the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega following September's 2022's All Out. After recovering from a torn left tricep suffered at All Out, CM Punk returned to anchor the new AEW Collision show in June, taking lead both on screen and behind the scenes as well. Punk has yet to speak publicly about the firing. Our own Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez discussed all the details regarding Punk's return on last night's edition of Wrestling Observer Radio, to which Dave Meltzer said that the deal came together about 10 days ago. Obviously, it was kept a secret from almost everyone, said Meltzer. He also noted that Punk has signed a multi-year agreement. TKO executives were also kept in the dark regarding Punk's return, something Meltzer said he was surprised to learn. Saying, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them knew, but I was told basically that it's not their gig. They're there to do business deals and make money, and the creative is in the hands of WWE. He went on to say that it was Nick Khan who made the call, and that Vince McMahon had nothing to do with it. Triple H obviously had a lot to do with it. In this week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Meltzer wrote that WWE was, quote, not completely opposed to punk returning of the idea, is it's something they have to do in regard to from fan response. He added that the current WWE management team does not want to be combative with the fan base in the same way that Vince McMahon often was. After Survivor Series went off the air, an angry Seth Rollins was seen being held back and flipping off Punk on the stage. However, Meltzer says everyone working the main event on Saturday was informed ahead of time that CM Punk returning would close the show. Saying, as far as the Seth thing goes, that was all an angle. The idea was to play off an interview Seth Rollins gave in January where he referred to CM Punk as a quote cancer. It has also been reported that Drew McIntyre was upset at the end of the PLE. He is said to have stormed to the back and left the arena quickly. It's not clear what Drew McIntyre was upset about, but Meltzer addressed what he has been told about the situation, saying he was very upset. As the night went on, he was less upset. As far as the reason he left, I don't want to give any wrong information. I will say that within the company, people in the company have told me they thought it had to do with Punk. I cannot confirm that. Only that's what people in the company thought, but he was legitimately upset about something. McIntyre's WWE contract is believed to expire around WrestleMania 40 after having time tacked onto it due to injury. A recent report from PW Insider stated Drew McIntyre has not signed a new deal and is open to taking a break from wrestling after his current contract expires. CM Punk is scheduled to be in Nashville on Monday for Raw, PW Insider and Fightful have reported. Additionally, Triple H has addressed CM Punk's return. At the Survivor Series press conference on Saturday, Triple H said that the deal to bring Punk back to the WWE happened super quick, saying that by the time people stopped speculating on his return, that was when everything came together. Take a listen to what he had to say. This was one of those... Um, 
the lightning in a bottle moments that came together very quickly. Um, but we are incredibly excited about it. You know, it's been a long time and um, in some ways been a long time coming. You know, you can say this about CM Punk. Love him, hate him, positive, negative, whatever you want to say. People talk about him all the time. Um, he is a, a magnet for that. He's a conversation starter. Um, and it's tough to look past that. And for me, if, if our fans want it, if the WWE Universe is excited to have it, then let's go. And we'll figure out the rest of it from there. Um, this came together super quick, um, which I'm sure is why it stayed very tight. You know, there's a lot of speculation at that point. It was nothing but speculation for most of the time. It was speculation. It didn't really start to come to fruition until everybody stopped thinking it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden it was happening. Um, but um, extremely excited. Triple H also said that both he and CM Punk were different people, alluding to Punk's departure from WWE in 2014 that ended on bad terms. A lot of time has gone by, almost 10 years, right? And if you are the same person you were 10 years ago, 10 years later, you've messed up. Everybody grows, everybody changes, um, and I'm a different person. He's a different person. Um, this is a different company, and we're all uh, we're all on a on a on the same even starting ground. So, what's next for CM Punk? That'll be interesting, won't it? Yeah, I'm 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 interested to see that myself. I know whatever it is, it'll be talked about. It'll be exciting, um, and it'll be a thrill ride for the WWE Universe, no matter no matter what it is. Um, and I'm thrilled, we're all thrilled um, to have him back here and um, to have him back, you know, cliche to say, but have him back home in WWE. It's where he belongs. When a reporter asked who pushed for Punk's return to the company, Triple H said that the only people who knew about Punk's return was himself and WWE President Nick Khan. When Cody Rhodes was asked about CM Punk's return, he said that if CM Punk can help with where WWE is going and what they're doing, then he is welcome aboard. He said that it was the best when someone is hungry and he feels this CM Punk is hungry. In other news, Triple H addressed the status of Jade Cargill during the Survivor Series post-event press conference. Upon signing with the company, Jade was shown on screen during episodes of Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, but has been absent from WWE programming in recent weeks. Triple H told the media on Saturday that he wants to make sure Jade is adequately prepared for whatever could be thrown at her before she officially begins her WWE career, saying, I have no less belief in her now than I did then. It's interesting, when she came in, we talked about her development and where she would land. I want to make sure that no matter what is thrown at Jade Cargill, she's ready. And at no fault of her own, I think she was just limited in that. So the idea is we exposed her, we made her be seen, people are understanding, and they are waiting, and they are excited for her to come, and when she does, it will be massive. I'm in no rush. When she says, I'm ready, I'm ready. Additionally, in the press conference, Triple H said Saturday's event was the highest grossing Survivor Series in history, with sponsorship up 25%. It is also the highest grossing event at the All-State Arena, aside from WrestleMania 22. Now on to some more highlights from Survivor Series. With the returning Randy Orton on their side, the babyfaces were victorious in the men's war game match at Survivor Series. Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso, Seth Rollins, and Sami Zayn defeated Judgment Day's Damian Priest, Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, JD McDonough, and Drew McIntyre in the main event of Saturday Night Show. Rhodes scored the pinfall on Priest after hitting the crossroads. There was a show-long storyline where the war games participants questioned whether or not Randy Orton would show 
show up. He didn't arrive until it was his turn to enter war games as the final participant. When Orden finally appeared, he thwarted a potential Money in the Bank cash in by Priest. Priest still holds the briefcase since he never officially cashed in on Seth. This was Orton's first time wrestling since May 2022. He underwent double fusion surgery last year as he battled a career-threatening back injury. Orton was feuding with the Usos prior to being forced out of action. There was some dissension between him and Jay teased in the War Games match, but they ultimately worked together to get the win. Before the finish of the match, Randy Orton delivered a super RKO to McDonough after Rollins and Zayn threw McDonough off the top of the cage. Orton then handed Priest to Rhodes so that Rhodes could hit the cross. Crossroads. The team of Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Shotzi defeated the team of Damage Control, Foursome, Io Sky, Asuka, Kairi Sane, and Bayley to win the women's war games match to kick off Survivor Series after Becky Lynch pinned Bayley after a manhandle slam off the ropes through a table. Belair's team began the bout with the order of entry advantage following a fan vote in a poll sponsored by Ruffles decided that factor. The match featured many of the expected weapon spots, including Io Sky reprising her trademark blind crossbody off the top of the cage with a trash can placed over her body. Other key moments in the bout included Sane hitting her insane elbow, plus Belair spraying Asuka with a fire extinguisher, and Charlotte doing a moonsault off the top of the cage. Flair and Lynch also embraced in the ring to a big crowd reaction, setting their years-long storyline beef that hit its apex at Survivor Series two years ago with a singles match. Early in the bout, Lynch was busted open and was attended by medical personnel to treat the cut during the contest. Our truth returned to WWE programming by taking part in a backstage comedy segment at Saturday's event. The segment was sponsored by Ruffles and also included Alpha Academy's Pretty Deadly, Chelsea Green, and Piper Niven. The 51-year-old had been away from the company since suffering a torn quad in November of 2022. During an NXT match against Grayson Waller, Truth suffered the injury when he didn't fully clear the top rope on a dive attempt and landed badly on his left leg. The match ended in a referee stoppage after Truth got hurt. He underwent surgery to repair the quad injury. In January of this year, he gave an update on his condition and said he underwent went a second surgery due to an infection. Truth was a 53-time WWE 24-7 champion when that title was in existence. Former WWE co-CEO and chairwoman Stephanie McMahon was reportedly backstage at Survivor Series. Fightful reported that Stephanie was backstage during the premium live event, but she isn't working at the show. FIFO notes that Stephanie is said to be hanging out and visiting as opposed to being there in a work capacity. This January, Stephanie resigns from her position with WWE. Stephanie's decision to resign from the company coincided with her father, Vince McMahon, forcing himself back into power as WWE's executive chairman. Stephanie has shared the CEO role with Nick Khan following Vince McMahon's retirement in July of 2022. Khan's current job title is president of WWE. When Stephanie resigned, she had said, I look forward to cheering on WWE from the other side of the business, where I started when I was a little kid, as a pure fan. I will always remain dedicated to WWE. I truly love our company, our superstars, our fans, and our employees. Stephanie had also been backstage at WrestleMania 39 earlier this year. Nick Khan has said that WWE would always love to have Stephanie back as part of the company if she wanted to return. Now on to some AEW news. Brian Danielson's in-ring return is set for next Saturday's AEW Collision as he begins his run in the Continental Classic Tournament. Danielson will take on Eddie Kingston, who lost to Brody King on Saturday's Collision in the tournament. It will be a rematch from their highly regarded October 2021 World Title Tournament Eliminator match that Danielson won. Danielson has been out of action since a late October tag team match on Dynamite. After a shot from Kazuchika Okada, Danielson began favoring his eye and was being tended to by AEW medical personnel as the show went off the air. It was later revealed that Danielson had suffered a broken orbital bone in his collision match with Andrade El Idolo just days prior. Prior to Saturday's full gear, AEW head Tony Khan said that they were waiting on doctors to clear Danielson to fly. He appeared on TV alongside Khan to declare himself as the first entrant into the round robin tournament. And speaking of that tournament, the AEW Continental Classic Blue League 
matches kicked off on Saturday's AEW Collision. In the opening of Saturday's show, Claudio Castagnoli defeated Daniel Garcia to earn three points. In the main event, Brody King picked up the victory over Eddie Kingston. The tournament continues on Wednesday when the next set of Gold League matches take place. John Moxley will face Jay Lethal, Mark Briscoe will face Roosh, and Jay White will take on Swerve Strickland. As of this video, the Continental Classic standings for the Gold League have John Moxley, Jay White, and Swerve Strickland tied with three points, and in the Gold League, Claudio Castagnoli and Brody King tied with three points. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to F4W Online for all of your pro wrestling news.